live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Veritas Vision 2017. Brought to you by Veritas. Welcome back to Veritas Vision 2017. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. My name is Dave Vellante and I'm here with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Dave Nettleton is here. He's the group product manager at Google. Dave, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Ah, thank you, really excited to be here. All right, let's talk storage and cloud. So Google Cloud Platform, we were at your show in, in March. Kind of the second coming out party, you know, Diane Green at the helm. Obviously, you guys are making serious moves in the enterprise. Give us the update overall, and then we'll get into the storage piece. Yeah, um, well as you say, over the last couple of years, a big focus for Google has actually been shifting uh, and focusing on uh, enterprise customers. Um, I think Gardner reflects that about a trillion dollars of IT spend is going to be affected by the cloud over the next uh, three to five years. Um, and Google has some amazing assets that it's developed over the last 10 or 15 years um, that uh, we can bring to bear to really help meet enterprise customers' needs, help them where they are, and really help transform their businesses uh, for the future. So we're excited about that. Well, so how's that going? I mean, one of the big thrusts that we heard in March was, and we saw it, you guys have made some moves, bringing in people from enterprise companies in particular. You've, you came from Microsoft, you see a lot of guys from Cisco, we saw a lot of guys running around from, from EMC, so Diane herself from VMware, bringing in a lot of that enterprise DNA. How, how is the, um, the patient you know, assimilating with those organs. Yeah, actually, actually that's been one of the most exciting parts, I think, of, uh, of the journey. Uh, has been watching the team kind of come together over the last year or two. Uh, as you say, uh, bringing together that pool of talent that has uh, entered one uh, and created even uh, new businesses uh, uh, in the past. It's amazing to see that talent group come together. Dan's doing an amazing job bringing the team together and building out all of the sales functions uh, and other parts of the business that we need for the enterprise. Building out the partner ecosystem as, as well is obviously uh, super critical. And when you marry that together with the technology assets that Google has, it really is giving customers unprecedented levels of capabilities in the clouds to operate their business in new, more efficient ways. So Google's really well known for kind of the analytics piece of the business. Uh, look at all the pieces that have spun out of what Google's done. Uh, I'm a networking guy by background. So, you know, I, I, I said when GCP was launched, I said Google's network is second to none. Yeah. You know, best network. You know, really understand when the whole wave of SDN came out. Storage, on the other hand, one of those kind of foundational pieces, but it's not the first thing that comes to mind, so give us a little bit of the pedigree of the group, you know, what you're building, what differentiates Google from kind of the other infrastructures of service and cloud players. Yeah, and actually you teed it up beautifully because yeah. one of our, in storage, big differentiators is actually our ability to leverage the network, so, yeah. let's, so let me talk you through that a little bit. Um, so, you know, Google internally has been building out massive scalable uh, storage systems for years to power the rest of Google. Um, and as we take those to our enterprise customers, we'll find that we're able to leverage that core infrastructure together with uh, global assets like our network. And two, two parts of the network actually I talk about. One is our wide area network. Uh, that allows us to actually uh, not only store data in regions around the world, but distribute that content uh, through hundreds of points of presence direct to customers very, very quickly. Uh, inside of our data centers, we have software-defined networks that allow us to separate our compute and storage that really help us then scale these independently so that we can give massive flexibility and cost savings and pass that through to our customers. And how this shows up in our products, uh, perhaps the best example is if you take something like Google Cloud Storage, which is our object storage uh, product. Um, that product is very differentiated in the industry in that it provides uh, a single API uh, that will meet uh, use cases from global content serving for customers like Spotify and Vimeo who want to stream media content around the world, streaming uh, news, web, media, uh, videos, all the way through to archival storage. Um, last year we launched our cold line storage class, um, and this is unique in the industry because it is archival storage that's online, and it has the same API and access as all of the rest of uh, Google Cloud Storage. So I can take a single piece of data, a video for example, I could be streaming it out to customers around the world globally, and then after a month or two I might decide that I want to archive it. Um, I can archive that down to our colder storage class, and if a customer wants to serve it up again, they have instant access to it. Yeah, the, the, what we're hearing from customers, and something we heard in the keynotes here, here at the Veritas show, is customers' cloud strategy is rather fragmented. And by that, I mean they haven't, they're not all in on one place to spot, you know, certain companies say that. 
How does that impact you know, your relationship with customers on storage? You know, how, how do you interact with their SaaS environment, their, their, their on-premises solutions, as well as you know, what you have inside Google? Yeah, you know? I, I mean, I think fundamentally we believe it's going, the world is going to evolve to a sort of a multi-cloud world, both, and that includes both on-premises and, and public clouds. Um, and as part of that, our strategy is to be, uh, be the most open. And be, by being the most open, that means we need to help customers be portable with their workloads. We need to help them bring their workloads to the cloud for when that's appropriate, but also if, they, if it's appropriate to take it to back to, say, on-premises, to enable them to do that in a very first-class way uh, as well. And we think what will happen is, um, you know, some customers will go all in on a particular crowd, there'll be particular use cases and platform capabilities that will be very differentiated that they want to go all in on, uh, and others will take a more uh, portfolio approach. And then partners uh, such as Veritas and others are great for helping customers through information map, help them manage that overall yeah. portfolio. Could you explain that portability? Is Kubernetes a piece of it? Is that the primary piece of it? And uh, you know, maybe explain a little bit more how Veritas fits in too. Yeah, so the, the overall ecosystem is evolving. Uh, Kubernetes is obviously a huge part of that, uh, that environment for being able to uh, portably move um, your compute around. Um, uh, in terms of relationship with Veritas, you know, for me, it's all about helping customers solve the problems that they have and meet customers where they are. And if customers are leveraging multiple clouds, either because they're using best of breed solutions through acquisitions, et cetera, they need the ability to be able to manage their data across all of those environments. And somewhere like, uh, so like Veritas with um, uh, Information Map is, is a key partner for us in helping customers meet and manage uh, their needs. So what does that mean for storage? So containers, obviously, for the you know, application portability, mobility, Kubernetes is sort of Google's little, little lever. You know, I mean, everybody wants to do Kubernetes and yep. you guys are you know, front and center there, so that gives you credibility in the cloud world. Not that you didn't have it before, but everybody now wants to sort of belly up to you on that. What does that mean for storage? Is that just sort of like an icebreaker for you guys? Is, are there other things that you're doing specific to storage to, to take advantage of your expertise there? Yeah, I mean, we want to make sure that customers have a really great integrated experience as they build out their application platforms. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you're, you know, we're always working with them to better define and uh, understand their needs and build that out. Uh, it is a fast emerging, fast evolving space. Uh, APIs are still evolving fast. Um, different layers of the stack are evolving fast. So, you know, we continue to work with customers and just meet their needs through partnerships and also first party. And, and as you move up the stack, sort of beyond sort of networking storage and, and compute into, into even database, uh, you know, Google's got some amazing database technologies. Are you doing specific things in storage to take advantage of that? Um, you know, making things run faster or more available or recover faster. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, um, the underlying infrastructure at Google powers a lot of our external facing services, so we actually are able to reap very interesting benefits by managing on a single shared TI, technical infrastructure that we have at Google. Um, but as that surface is up to customers, we have to make sure obviously that they can use it in the ways that uh, best meet their needs. But we want to make sure that we integrate uh, their solutions uh, as easy as possible. So for example, um, Google Cloud Storage that I was just talking about is really well integrated with uh, Dataproc, which is our managed to do uh, 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 product for running uh, big data workloads, and also with something like uh, BigQuery, uh, which is our massively scalable data warehousing solution. So I can store a lot of my unstructured data in Google Cloud Storage, and then leverage my entire analytics portfolio uh, to operate over that. And again, a key part of that is the separation of compute and networking that we were talking about. When storage is separate from compute and we've used a very powerful software-defined network, then that lets us spin up thousands of nodes in something like BigQuery to operate over data um, and make a very seamless experience for customers. So Stu kind of touched on it before. When people talk about Google and Google Cloud, they point to two things. Obviously, the Google Apps suite, okay, boom, you know, we're a customer, love it. Everybody's familiar with it. And the other is data, you know, the data king. Um, and they kind of put you in those two boxes. Are you comfortable with that? Is that fair? Um, is that really the brand that you want? Are you trying to extend that? I wonder if you could comment. Yeah, I mean, um, obviously our strengths have been in analytics and machine learning. And we, and we find that that's a thing that uh, customers are really looking to find ways to add net new value to their business. But we also wanted to make sure, we also want to make sure that we're a very trusted uh, provider, uh, offering the various high levels of uh, services. Uh, and it's not just the capabilities, but overall TCO. 
Like we want to make it much easier for people to develop net new applications on the platform. We talked a little bit about some of our open capabilities, but just in general, we want to make it easy for customers to get the best value out of their cloud. So we'll be doing, you'll see us doing more and more there. Um, uh, you know, th things we've done have been like uh, being able to create uh, custom, um, custom VM images. You can dial up your memory and size, give you a lot of flexibility to really just hone in and solve the problems that you have. So help us square circle there. Uh -huh. When you talk to the, the cloud, I'll call it pure cloud folks, cloud, people that you know, born in the cloud, they develop cloud from day one, no legacy infrastructure. We talk to those guys, like, wow, TCO, the advantages from a developer advantage, you know, the speed, et cetera. When you talk to the legacy enterprise guys, they'll tell you, oh, it's expensive in that cloud. <laughs> a lot of people moving back from that cloud. Now, of course, we know the cloud growth is astronomical, the enterprise growth is flat at best. Uh, but there's, there's two different, you know, exact polar opposites. W which is the truth? I mean, the truth is it depends on what you need, right? Um, uh, you know, we think cloud will be a huge disruptor to, uh, to IT spend over the next already several is. years. It, it already yeah. is. You know, go wind back five or 10 years ago, uh, I, I don't think people would even be thinking we'd be having the conversations that we have today. People were like, security, right? You know, I'm not even sure I, this cloud thing. <laughs> seems like a shared colo facility to me. Uh, I don't think I want to go near that. And, it's taken us a while, you know, collectively as an industry, to ed educate uh, really what the cloud is, that it's actually a much more integrated set of services that helps people up-level what it is that they can do. But, you know, it, one of the biggest challenges we still face in, uh, in the industry is just education, skills. Um, you know, it takes time to learn new skills. Um, it's uh, encouraging developers, building, working with partners, you know, providing solutions to IT that make it much more turnkey for them to use solutions, so they don't have to learn uh, you know, deep developer skills or you know, super high-end data science skills to get value out of their data. Yeah, one of the hot button topics at this show has been GDPR. How does Google fit into the discussion? How are you helping customers get ready for that? Yeah, well obviously we're very well aware of GDPR and are working really hard to make sure that we're going to be meeting the requirements for our customers as we move forward. We take security and compliance incredibly seriously. So yes, expect us to see us having full GDPR compliance and then working with partners to make sure that customers can get the uh, the, the confidence that they need for their, uh, for their businesses. So Dave, as a storage sort of technology guy, what are the big trends that, that you're tracking uh, as it relates to storage that sort of are driving your Google's thinking? Yeah, great question. So, um, uh, so you know, more and more data is going to be coming out, like data has traditionally been siloed, people haven't known where their data is. More and more of that data is now going to be shared within a single environment. And it's not just going to be in the cloud. That data is going to reach both on-premises on and also all the way out to the edge. Um, you know, I IoT is going to be a huge generator of data. Being able to gather that data, manage that data, um, provide rich analytics uh, over that data and machine learning, and then push that uh, intelligence back out to the edge um, uh, so that actually data that's produced can just be analyzed right there. Um, is going to be uh, super important. I, 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 I love to say that you know, data is the fuel for uh, analytics and ML, um, uh, and, that, and that fuel uh, is going to be not just in the cloud on-prem uh, and all the way to the edge, and, and managing that uh, is going to be super, super, super interesting. I think network, again, uh, network, once you start to uh, um, uh, bring low latency networks to your storage, you can actually start to do really new and interesting things with your data that you never thought of before. You know, if your data, if you can't access it quickly, your data's dark to you. It might as well not be there, right? And has, have things like, how have things like Flash affected sort of bottlenecks? I mean, you mentioned the network. People talk about the network is now the new, the new bottleneck. How is that shaping your thinking? Yeah, I mean, uh, so uh, storage trends continue, densities get higher, speeds get faster. Um, that's a trend that's been continuing. We've been tracking it, continuing to track it. Um, for me, that just means then people will uh, store more data and look to get more value out of that data. It's sort of like the uh, the latent value of the uh, the latent value of your data is often a function of how quickly you can run machine learning and analytics over that data and get value out of it. Um, and you know we can do things now 
to analyze data faster than ever before. I, I was just thinking of an example the other day. I was running a query myself to look at uh, storage usage. Uh, you know, it's something I do regularly. Um, and I ran the query, looked at the results. Oh, that's cool. And then I was like, oh, uh, how, many how many rows of data am I querying here? I ran that query. Oh, that was like several billion rows of data that I've just analyzed in like four seconds. I have no idea how much compute power was ran up in the background to, for, to meet that query, right? But that's kind of the power that um, uh, these new capabilities will enable over that data. Yeah. Dave, how are customers doing with the kind of, the, the thing I want to poke at is in their own data centers, utilization is usually abysmal. Um, right. And mo the, the biggest problem we have is when you do a new technology, you do it the old way. How are they doing at really taking advantage of cloud, getting utilization, utility? You know, I, I'm sure if they go all serverless and per microsecond, it'd be much better, but you know, how are they doing? Well, yeah. so one of the beauties of the cloud is of course that it's a pay-as-you-go model, right? And with storage and compute being uh, disaggregated, we see customers can provision storage, uh, pay per gig uh, as they go, um, and then when they need to run compute, they just pay for the compute as they need it. They can shape custom compute instances in GCP, so they only pay for the compute that they need. When they finish, they can shut them down. And if you're running something like, for example, a Hadoop workload, where traditionally you are provisioning large amounts of compute and storage, sizing for maximum capacity, you no longer need to think about that anymore. You can just store data super cheaply when you want to run a large 100,000, 10,000 node uh, uh, Hadoop cluster over that data, no problem. You spin it up, it spins up in under a minute, um, run huge amounts of compute, shut it down, and, you know, and you're done. Um, and you know, actually what we're finding is that like, this is leading, you know, people are now having to ask new questions of how they manage cost and controls in their business because this is an incredible power that you can give to businesses, but they also want the controls <laughs> to say, hey, 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 don't do that too often, or if you do, like, hey, I want to I, I, I manage it and you know, uh, manage the cost and controls for departments inside of organizations, so we're building out the capabilities to help customers with that. Uh, last question, uh, Veritas, we're here. What do you look for in a, in a partner like, like Veritas? What do, you, what do you want from Veritas partnership? So, so Veritas is a, a, is a fantastic partner for us. You know, they really help us do the two things that we strive for, which is meet customers where they are today and help them transform their business for the future. So for our integration with uh, NetBackup, uh, really helps customers uh, in the enterprise just use existing products that they know and love and in a very turnkey way, uh, use the cloud. Um, that helps them uh, manage the costs and meet uh, a lot of demands that they have for their, in their IT environments today super easily, so we love that. It also empowers them to do new things in the future. So the integration with Information Map, we love, helps customers identify uh, new opportunities in their data um, and get new add new value to their business. Hey, David Nettleton, Google, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for coming. Thank you very much, it's been a pleasure. All right, we'll keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. This is Veritas Vision 2017. You're watching theCUBE. <laughs>